Good evening. Welcome to the Cathedral of Mary, our Queen, especially to those who may be visiting in person or joining us through the webcast. To better express the fullness of the Eucharist, communion will be offered under both forms this evening. Please follow the instructions of the ushers. The St. Joseph Chapel will be open for adoration until midnight when night prayer will take place. This, reading, this evening's readings, Mass, of the Lord's Supper begin at number 1143 in the Ritual Song Hymnal. The music of the liturgy is contained in the printed Triduum Worship Aid. We ask you to leave the booklet in the pews for use during, throughout Good Friday and Holy Saturday. If you wish to join the procession to the St. Joseph Chapel for adoration, please follow the directions of the ushers. At the conclusion of Mass, all are invited to remain during the stripping of the altar and sanctuary. Please, remain a spirit of sil please maintain a spirit of silence out of respect for the Blessed Sacrament as we keep vigil with the Lord. Our opening hymn is in the worship aid on page three. We glory in the cross in the cross of Christ. Page three in the worship aid. Please rise and join in singing as we begin our celebration.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My brothers and sisters, peace be with you. What a joy it is to gather with you on this holy Thursday night, this evening Mass of the Lord's Supper, this night when we commemorate the institution of the Eucharist, the sacrament of charity, this night when we commemorate the institution of the holy priesthood. This night I begin by greeting the pastor and rector of our cathedral, Monsignor Boy, my brother priest and deacons, our religious, our seminarians, our parishioners, our choir, our visitors, all dear friends, gathered together truly as a family of faith. Let's now place ourselves in God's presence and ask for the grace to celebrate these mysteries worthily. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who have called us to participate in this most sacred supper, in which your only begotten Son, when about to hand himself over to death, entrusted to the church a sacrifice new for all eternity, the banquet of his love, 
grant, we pray, that we may draw from so great a mystery the fullness of charity and of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall stand at the head of your calendar. You shall reckon it the first month of the year. Tell the whole community of Israel, On the tenth of this month, every one of your families must procure for itself a lamb, one apiece for each household. If a family is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join the nearest household in procuring one and shall share in the lamb in proportion to the number of persons who partake of it. The lamb must be a year old male and without blemish. You may take it from either the sheep or the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month, and then, with the whole assembly of Israel present, it shall be slaughtered during the evening twilight. They shall take some of its blood and apply it to the two doorposts and the lintel of every house in which they partake of the lamb. That same night, they shall eat its roasted flesh with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. This is how you are to eat it. With your loins gird, sandals on your feet, and your staff in hand, you shall eat like those who are in flight. This is the Passover of the Lord. For on this same night, I will go through Egypt, striking down every firstborn of the land, both man and beast, and executing judgment on all the gods of Egypt, I, the Lord. But the blood will mark the houses where you are. Seeing the blood, I will pass over you. Thus, when I strike the land of Egypt, no destructive blow will come upon you. This day shall be a memorial feast for you, which all your generations shall celebrate with pilgrimage to the Lord as a perpetual institution. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God.
thanksgiving sacrifice I make, I will call on the name of the Lord. My vows to the Lord I will fulfill before all his A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was handed over, took bread and, after he had given thanks, broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also the cup, after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. I give you a new commandment, says the Lord. Love one another. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Before the feast of Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to pass from this world to the Father. He loved his own in the world, and he loved them to the end. The devil had already induced Judas, son of Simon the Iscariot, to hand him over. So, during supper, fully aware that the Father had put everything into his power, and that he had come from God and was returning to God, he rose from supper and took off his outer garments. He took a towel and tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and dry them with the towel around his waist. 
he came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Master, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, What I am doing you do not understand now, but you will understand later. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, Unless I wash you, you will have no inheritance with me. Simon Peter said to him, Master, then not only my feet, but my hands and head as well. Jesus said to him, Whoever has bathed has no need except to have his feet washed, for he is clean all over. So you are clean, but not all, for he knew who would betray him. For this reason he said, not all of you are clean. So when he had washed their feet and put his garments back on and reclined at table again, he said to them, Do you realize what I have done for you? You call me teacher and master, and rightly so, for indeed I am. If I, therefore, the master and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. I have given you a model to follow, so that as I have done for you, you should also do. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear friends in the Lord Jesus, when I was about 10 years old, my grandparents celebrated their 50th wedding anniversary. <coughs> Grandma and Grandpa were very sociable and they were blessed with a lot of good friends. So naturally, a big celebration was planned. First, with a mass at their local parish, and then a formal dinner at a local restaurant. Things have changed a lot since then, but back then, I was a picky eater. White Castles and Twinkies were great, but fine food and dining, that was another matter. Looking at the array of food that was spread for this grand occasion, I blanched. To their great embarrassment, mom and dad couldn't get me to eat a thing. You don't know what you're missing, my father said to me plaintively. And mom, for her part, didn't waste time negotiating. If you don't eat now, she said, you won't get anything when you get home. 
I was unmoved. That night, I went to bed hungry. Sad to say, the 10-year-old version of myself is something of a symbol for far too many Catholics in this local church of Baltimore and in our country. Many who otherwise have healthy appetites are picky eaters when it comes to the Holy Eucharist. Many of our fellow Catholics no longer turn to the Mass, the Eucharist, as the source of their spiritual nourishment. And so they go about spiritually hungry. What my dad once said of me could be said of them. They don't know what they're missing. The reasons why people are absent from Sunday Mass vary. Some feel that they can find spiritual nourishment elsewhere in popular forms of spirituality with evangelists who preach the gospel of prosperity in self-help programs and maybe even as few still think they can find such things in New Age spirituality. Others feel that they receive enough inner nourishment from their family and friends, their work, and their leisure. Perhaps they are a little bit the way I was way back when. I truly believed that fast food was better than good food, and sometimes still do. Still other people would say that when they do come to Mass, they aren't fed. In other words, the homily's boring, the singing and music are mediocre, the congregation is unengaged, even the flowers on the altar are wilting. And of course, no one of us in church leadership can be satisfied with that. Pope Francis often speaks about preaching the word of God effectively. Pope Benedict wrote about the art of celebrating the liturgy well and beautifully. Everyone knows that parishes flourish where the preaching's good, the celebration of mass is reverent and joyful and parishioners are engaged engaged in ministry, especially to the poor. Yet celebrating the liturgy well, vitally important as that is, is not the whole story. We can attend a most beautifully staged and celebrated mass. We can be wowed by its pageantry and its emotion, yet not really enter into the heart of the sacred mystery unfolding before our eyes. Or we can walk away from a less than glorious celebration of the Mass and decry its threadbare qualities without realizing the great mystery we have just witnessed. Holy Thursday, the night in which we commemorate the Last Supper, the institution of the Eucharist and the priesthood, Holy Thursday is a good day to remind ourselves what the Eucharist is really all about, whether celebrated in a grand cathedral or a humble chapel. It is the Lord himself who is our teacher. Nothing in the scriptures leads us to believe that the Last Supper was celebrated without word opulence or grandeur. Its inward beauty shines forth. When Jesus, who is teacher and master, kneels before his disciples and washes their feet, 
fully aware of his divinity, fully aware of his mission, Jesus humbled himself before his disciples, doing something that was normally the work of servants. In performing this symbolic act, Jesus taught us three things at once. First, he points to the humiliation of the cross by which he would give his life for us in love to save us from our sins. Second, the washing of the feet is a symbol of baptism by which we are thoroughly cleansed from the filth of sin by the power of the cross. And third, Jesus' act of humble service is a model, a paradigm for the way we should live our lives. We are to love one another and to serve one another as Jesus loves and serves us. And our love and service and mercy should extend to those who are poor and on the margins. So it is that we refer to Jesus' washing of the feet as the mandatum, as the mandate, as the new law of love, to love others, to show mercy as God has first loved us. At table with his disciples during the Passover meal, Jesus again reveals the beauty and depth of his love. He celebrates with them the deliverance of God's people from the slavery of Egypt, but he does so as the one who will bring about a new and more profound deliverance. For on the next day on the cross, Jesus himself is the sacrificial lamb. He, the lamb of God, who will deliver humanity from the slavery of sin and death. He, the lamb of God, who will lead any and all who accept this deliverance into the freedom and the joy of the kingdom of heaven. As he took bread, blessed it and broke it, and said, this is my body given for you. As he took the cup and said, this is the new covenant in my blood, Jesus encapsulated his presence and his sacrificial love in the bread and wine, totally transformed into himself by those very words. 